Well, if this is proven to be true, it's probably going to sign the death blow to casual hookups, or at least uh, casual hookups without a lot of prior thought. So, you know, in today's day and age, uh, a lot of things are getting a lot more sexually per permissive. And, uh, you know, a lot of it's actually being encouraged through the media. But, uh, not to even put out a moral thing here, but I'm going to put out something that's more scientific. You wouldn't believe this. Uh, this is, it's true, probably true as a heart attack, you know, whatever. Uh, as serious as a heart attack or whatever. But, um, male micro chimerism actually when a woman have a son in a womb it's actually been proven that some of the sons the baby's DNA becomes embedded in the woman's brain goes through the blood brain barrier and actually there's a another host DNA that's inside the woman but they found and they did studies and this is actually from PubMed um, hmm, it's kind of interesting but they found out that there's actually, this occurs, it's not infrequent in women without sons. So what it's saying is that the only place that could have happened really is through sex, unprotected sex. So uh, what's going on here is, uh, you know, it's right off the site here. So, you know, medical news, PubMed, and you name it. So, you know, it looks like, uh, you know, casual sex should be thought of actually as a little bit more... Um, with a little more afterthought because if a person is hooking up with somebody who they think, oh, this person's fun, but I wouldn't want to be involved with them forever, you might be sharing your their DNA for the rest of your life, believe it or not, if you're having unprotected sex with that person. So, um, and it looks like it's pretty solid scientific evidence. It's not coming from a religious standpoint. It's not coming from a preacher but it kind of like uh, you know the days of the you know the hippie culture, free and easy and everything, where people aren't thinking too much through the consequences. I know the normal consequences was STDs and pregnancy, but you'd never think of you would be sharing that person's having that person's DNA pass through the blood-brain barrier and actually affect the way you think. So it could tell you that you know if you're actually dealing with an evil person. Um, you're going to be sharing that person's DNA forever. So, <laughs> I don't know, man. It kind of like uh, puts a damper on a casual sex type thing because, and it also explains, you know, sometimes, you know, from my uh, observation and from my experience, it seems that women that have been hooking up a lot over their period of life, they seem to be almost like they're possessed and they seem to have a lot of problems. I mean, it's like they have no, nothing to really anchor them in some way. And it's almost like, you know, live for today and that hell with it. It's almost like they're dominated by another force. And it may be the DNA from all these prior partners. Who the hell knows, man? Who the hell knows? But it's not something that it's a religious theory. It's actually coming back to science, science all the way. Now, they knew about this when a woman had a baby son. She would, the, the son's DNA could pass the blood-brain barrier and be embedded in the woman for life. But it could also be from sperm because they're showing that the only possible way that, uh, you know, a, a person, you know, could... You know, where it could be absorbed, it's actually a woman absorb and carry living DNA and cells from every male they had in, uh, intercourse with. The only, because they've shown that a lot of women that have never had children still found DNA prevalent in the free female brain that was from a male. So, where the hell did it come from? Where the hell did it come from? You know, the most obvious thing would be from sex so <laughs> you know it may be why some of the ancient religious things and practices uh you know <laughs> said one thing or another they said they don't really want this information out because they're pretty much encouraging prom promiscuity you know to uh depopulate or whatever and making females into uh basically you know just objects of i don't know femininity but not really individuals where everybody really conforms 
you know, it's almost like conformity. A nonconformity is conformity. You know, I always, I always observed that about the hippie movement in some ways when that first came out. Like I'm older, but I remember that when that first came on. But it was almost like you were conforming to something that was nonconforming. So it's best to be a true nonconformist than be an individual all the way. But it's something to think about next time you go out clubbing at the Babyface nightclub because um, it's, you know, when you think, you're thinking like, you know, I'm never going to see this person again. I'm never going to bother with this person. This is just going to be one time. And if you have unprotected sex with that person, it's not just about, you know, say you can't be pregnant, say the person doesn't have an STD, but you could be sharing their DNA for life. Man, that's weird. I mean, I you know, actually DNA, it's actually been kind of shown that DNA is a little bit different than a lot of people think it is. Um, it's kind of like um, a communication device. It emits light, it emits energy, it could be unraveled, it could be reinstructured, uh, it can be done through, you know, substances you abuse and substances that bring health to the body. Uh, so actually... Emotional feelings have a lot to do with strengthening DNA too. So, but casual hookups actually, uh, you can actually be carrying the DNA from your partner for life. It's weird, man. I'm not putting this out. I'm not like a religious person. I'm not somebody saying it one way or the other. I'm just saying it from the point that uh, it's an interesting scientific study, and I'll point to the link on this. Actually, this was uh, this is right from Publish PubMed. So. It's been a number of scientific studies. You could actually look them up. But it's been known about that the women who have sons can carry some of their DNA and, and it could transmit, trans, go through the blood-brain barrier and be in their brain and it could be a host. The female is a good host for the male DNA. But now they've been finding that even with women that have never had sons, never had children, they still have this in their brain, and they're saying it must be from the sperm of the male. So, and you figure that's got to be true because, you know, it contains DNA, right? So, if it gets into the body, it's going to, the woman becomes a host for that. So, you know, it also could maybe, maybe state something where people have a lot of casual hookups with people that are, you know, pretty wild and crazy. You know, sometimes these people, it's almost like they have a lot of problems, almost as if they're possessed. And, you know, maybe it's the DNA itself. But, you know, some of that may be able to be alleviated with uh, frequencies, light therapy, because all DNA, um, in my opinion anyway, it's not really, uh, well, it's not based upon just, you know, conjecture, but all DNA can actually be repaired, restructured, rejuvenated, and basically we are all light beings. We are all light beings. So if you feel as if you were tormented sometimes, and maybe it's from past relationships, maybe it's from embedded DNA, there may be something that could be done with that. And, uh, you know, one thing I've been putting out a lot is that about that spooky, too, um, um, quantum entanglement uh, Rife machine that uses Mobius coils. Uh, maybe that's a possible way to undo that, to damage from other people's DNA. I mean, that's just a theory, but I really don't know that for a fact. But, you know, if in a healthy relationship, you should actually be sharing better DNA. And, um, you know, then there's casual relationships and there's more casual relationships. And, uh, you know, that's just one of the things where um, it's another um, thing where, you know, there's a lot more reason to have uh, laws against people making, uh, you know, forcing unwanted sex on people it's not even just about the physical and mental damage but it's also about permanently sharing that person's dna that you do not want so that's another you know reason on top of the existing reasons because you know those are usually evil people that try to uh, force that on people but it's just something to ponder it's just something to think about and um it's uh you know not that i'm putting it out as a moral thing but it's just uh it's probably a factual scientific thing. So, 
you know, <laughs> choose your coach, choose your partners carefully because you may be sharing DNA for the rest of your life with them. And, uh, you know, that may be something you're not really thinking about because it's like, hey, I'm only going to deal with this person for a week, you know, <laughs> and I'm moving on. I'm out of here. You know, and maybe that's, you know, you don't realize what's going on. So who the hell knows? I don't know. Anyway, it looks like it's very scientifically proven, though. It looks like it's been very scientifically proven, and it makes a lot of sense. Actually, we are all interconnected beings in a lot of different ways that people don't realize, you know, because we only see the material, we only see the physical, um, but maybe you want to call it the spiritual or the energy or the frequency or whatever the hell it is, but, you know, we're all interconnected in different ways. So when you have sex, you probably are going to be sharing that DNA with that person for the rest of your life, so... You know, if you're a casual sex person, you should be thinking a little bit more about uh, the consequences of that. Because, um, not to put it out as a moral thing, but I have noticed that people who have had a lot of casual sex, they seem to be possessed. And maybe that's the why. Maybe that's why, because they're sharing the DNA of too many evil people or something, or people that don't care about them, or whatever the hell it is. So, who the hell knows? Who the hell knows? But... I thought I'd put this out there because I don't think it's anywhere on YouTube land, and uh, it is a fact. It's not. Uh, it's not a theory. It's probably a. It looks like it's a very solid fact because when they're showing these studies, and I'll just repeat that again, when they're showing these studies, um, they're saying that it, the same thing happens where women were sharing the DNA from males. They still did not. They did. The women did not have sons. So how did they get it? The only way they probably got it was through sex. How else? How else? Right? Most likely freaking uh, way. And it also uh, kind of like uh, puts a little bit of a uh, dampener on the uh, you know the cultural wave that's being pushed by the Illuminati to be very promiscuous. Not that I am like a Bible thumper or same sex par same sex partner this and opposite sex partner that or or, uh, you know, you have to be married to the same person forever and everything, or monogamous. I'm just saying you should be careful, like, who you choose for partners. And uh, it's uh, something that is, um, this is another angle, you know, aside from moral and religious angles, but it's a scientific angle that's telling you that, you know, to think ahead, think ahead of the consequences, because you could be dealing with it for life, and you really don't realize how long... Uh, you know, <laughs> you might be car you will be carrying that person's DNA forever, more than likely, and it does pass through the uh, blood-brain barrier of the female, and the female is a very good, ready host for this. So, uh, you know, it's uh, when you're out there in the club, just think about it. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, not to put any kind of dampener on things, but this is some wild information, and uh, it's kind of surprising, but in a way, it's not surprising. Because the more I'm learning about quantum entanglement, the more I'm learning about frequencies, the more I'm learning about energies and light, and what we really are consisting of, the more it makes sense. So, we don't actually live in a material world per se, we live in a uh, world of energies and uh, frequencies and light. So, things can be intertwined a lot more than you think. <laughs>